In this video, we will witness Battle of the Cars. We'll be pitting the challenger spaghetti squash noodles versus the traditional favorites of rice and pasta. For those who don't know, when spaghetti squash is cooked and fluffed with a fork, the spaghetti squash forms thin, small noodles, which are way lower in carbs and can really up your nutritional game. Then you can substitute it for anything you might use rice or pasta for, like the stir fry I'll show you at the end. I think you're really going to be amazed when I show you how much lower in carbs this simple substitution is. This is not just a minor difference. With just a little bit of planning, you can have this substitution ready for any dinner you might use regular pasta or rice in. Now, some of you may be saying to yourself, I just want to see how to make it stop with the nutrition lecture. However, I really believe that having a better understanding about nutrition can help you change your habits if you are trying to eat healthier. Generalities like, I know that food's healthy, or I know I should eat less sugar, are easy for us to rationalize excuses to not do what we should do more of the time. But if you truly understand more specifics about why something will damage or will benefit your health, I believe you're more inclined to stick to a new habit you're trying to form. For example, when I tell you in some of my other videos, I know I can sound like a broken record talking about the health benefits of flax, but is it more impactful when I say, eat more flax because it's healthy, or eat flax every day because you will get fiber, important omega-3 fatty acids, and cancer-fighting lignans. I can speak to this personally because years ago I told myself I ate healthy, yet I never lost weight and then <gasps> eventually gained weight, yet I was still eating well and exercising. Obviously not as well as I thought. Once I started researching and understanding the damage processed foods and excess sugar were doing to me over the long term and I changed my habits, I saw a lot of positive effects on my health that went far beyond weight loss. But that's a video for another time, perhaps. If you give me just a few minutes, I think you'll really be amazed at what you'll see when I show you how spaghetti squash compares to pasta and rice nutritionally. That being said, if you're pressed for time or just want to jump to the recipe, you can jump forward to this time in the video. Or if you're watching on a computer, you can look in the description below for the timestamps Click on the link to the point in the video you want to get to and it'll take you right there. Now, carbs in and of themselves are not bad. Carbs from fruit, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes are generally fine. It's the excess of carbs that's becoming common in the standard American diet that is the problem. And these excess carbs are most frequently consumed in the form of breads, pastas, rice, as well as added sugars. Does this sound like what you might eat in a day? Maybe for breakfast you have a bowl of cereal or a muffin or a bagel. Then for lunch you have a sandwich on bread, snack on some pretzels in the afternoon, and then have a big bowl of pasta for dinner with a piece of cake for dessert. I gotta give it to you straight, that's a whole lot of carbs. And many of the carbs in that example have been stripped of their full nutrition by the food industry processing and removing parts. Combine that with a sedentary office job, low physical activity, as is typical for many of us, and you're eating a whole lot of carbs for fuel, but not using them. So the more you can start to substitute out some of these nutritionally lacking carbs like white flour and sugar, replace them with more nutrition-rich choices, the more you're going to improve your health. If you're intrigued by the science behind some of this, I encourage you to check out videos by Dr. Sten Ekberg and Dr. Nick Zerkowski. They're really informative. I'll put a link to their YouTube channels in the description below. Now it's time for Battle of the Cars. So with a stir fry we of course would most often put our veggies and or meat on top of brown or white rice or maybe noodles. Let's compare one cup of those with the nutrition in one cup of cooked spaghetti squash. 
The first thing you'll notice is that the spaghetti squash is about five times lower in calories compared to these other options. Five times! This is not an insignificant difference, people. Now, calories aren't everything. Nutritional content counts for something. So let's keep looking. We can see that it has about four times less total carbs. Still has some fiber, so the net carbs, which is total carbs minus fiber, we see that spaghetti squash has five times lower the amount. Yes, it's low in protein, but honestly, if you're depending on bread and pasta as your only protein source, you've got to go back to nutrition school. Add to that, it's way higher in potassium, and it's starting to look really good. So, let me give you a choice. You could have four cups of spaghetti squash and get less calories, less net carbs, essentially the same protein, and way more potassium, or have one cup of pasta and likely still be hungry. Naysayers, you might be saying, this is not a substitute for pasta or rice. The texture is totally different. Pasta and rice are firmer, they're larger, they have a better bite, and the spaghetti squash has a more wet consistency compared to a pasta noodle, to which I would say that, of course, with any type of food, there's never going to be an exact replica of that food that is also magically way better nutritionally. I'm not saying this is an exact taste replica of pasta or rice, but what I am saying is there are some similarities, and when you actually see these numbers, doesn't that make it worth it to try doing this at least some of the time so you can gradually start moving toward better health? First step is to prepare the spaghetti squash. Split it halfway down the middle and then flip it over to the other side and cut it down the middle on the other side. You'll see on the inside there are some seeds that need to be removed. If you're really industrious, you can separate those seeds from the strings and roast them. The easiest way to take them out is with a spoon and if you have a grapefruit spoon with the teeth on the edge, that's even better because it will allow you to get it out a little bit quicker and easier. Next lay your cut spaghetti squashes cut side up on a baking sheet with aluminum foil and what we'll do next is put about a teaspoon or so into each half and we're going to spread that around evenly with our hands and then season with some salt and pepper. Very simple. Now keep in mind you are going to need at least an hour and a half of this recipe because it's an hour, could be 40 to 60 minutes of baking time, and then they do need to almost, not cool completely, but they need to cool so they're not hot to the touch when you uh, shred them to make the noodles. Last, flip the squash cut side down and turn your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 200 degrees Celsius. You're going to bake these in the oven for 40 to 60 minutes until they turn slightly golden brown and the key test is a fork will go through them easily when they are done cooking. And after they have cooled enough so that you will not burn yourself silly while holding it, then simply take a fork and fluff all the noodles by scraping them out and into a container. And I'm going to dice up some ginger and some garlic very finely and use whatever vegetables I have on hand. Tonight happen to be broccoli and carrots. And when I do my sauces, I'm going to just use some fish sauce, some sesame oil, some tamari, and then just a little bit of hoisin sauce to give it some flavor. I preheated my wok on a high heat, and I'm actually using a coconut oil, which is a good high heat oil that is not a man-made processed oil like vegetable oil or peanut oil. A little bit healthier for you there. I'm sure what a Zhongguo Peng my Chinese friends would say very inauthentic, but I am trying to eat healthier, so I will make some sacrifices. And stir frying the broccoli and carrots, vegetables first before the meat. Stir fry those up for three to five minutes till they're tender crisp, and then we'll take them out and we'll do the shrimp. 
reheated the wok, added a little bit more coconut oil, swirled it around, then added the ginger and garlic and shrimp and cooked for a few minutes. My apologies for the shoddy camera work. Add the vegetables back to the pan and now it's time to add our sauces. We're not going to make this like a super saucy, sugary American Chinese dish. No, no, we're just going to use a tablespoon or two of hoisin, depending on the amount of vegetables and shrimp you have in here. And it does help if that's at room temperature, by the way. It'll pour a little easier. And maybe a tablespoon of tamari and a half tablespoon each of both fish sauce and the sesame oil. Mix it all around and start thinking yum. And then simply top your spaghetti squash noodles with your stir fry. And there you have it, a dish that has one-fifth the net carbs compared to using rice or pasta. I have some steps for you. One, like this video. Two, subscribe to Dad's Dishes and put the notifications on all. And three, share this video with everyone you know. And four, comment down below. Bye. Bye.